our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, and that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us say together our prayer for stewardship found on page three of your service leaflet. God of abundance and grace, you have united us together in purpose and place. We give thanks for all your gifts and pray that you inspire us with your freely given love to serve you, our neighbors, and our community of faith. May we bless, break, and freely share our time, talent, and treasure, being rooted in joy, rooted in love, and rooted in abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care 
because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Time is a funny thing. Now, I'm not talking about the time on your watch or on your cell phone, nor even the time that you can tell by looking out the window at the morning light. Although, how many of you were a little disoriented this last week with the time change and you thought, that's not the way it's supposed to look? I think some of us were. Instead, I'm talking about the way the church marks time. Now, many of you will know that we begin with the season of Advent, in which we prepare for the great and glorious mystery of Christmas, the Holy Feast of the Incarnation. But Advent is so much more than counting down the days until we celebrate the birth of Jesus, as a lot of commercials will say. Although if they get the birth of Jesus, I, I would give them 10 points. <laughs> Advent is about contemplating the things in life and faith that really matter. Now, traditionally, the church has named these, these things that really matter the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. What cheery subjects right before Christmas. But the themes of the four last things set the stage and provide the context for welcoming the Lord, the Messiah, the one who is at the same time the child of Bethlehem, the judge of humankind, and the sovereign of the universe. We humans are in need of a savior, a messiah, a sovereign, and it's foolish to pretend otherwise. Now you may wonder why I'm talking about Advent, whether I've lost my place and skipped ahead several weeks in the calendar. But the church tells time in a way that is circular rather than linear. Just a few weeks ago in Sunday School Workshop, we had a story, we heard a story called the Circle of the Church Year, and we spent time wondering about that. We in the church tell time by seasons and feasts and colors and scripture readings. Now the start of the year and the conclusion of the year are actually tied together thematically 
one big story that keeps being told and retold and lived, world without end, amen. And in our Sunday School workshop, we have a calendar that helps us visualize this as we move from Advent to Christmas and then on to Epiphany and then some of the green Sundays until we move into Lent. And Lent, here's the purple for Lent, it's a longer and more somber season than Advent as we prepare for the mystery that's even greater than Christmas, the mystery that is Easter, the defeat of the powers of death and resurrection, excuse me, death and destruction through the death and resurrection to new life of Jesus. And then because Easter is such a great and tremendous and joyful mystery, it takes seven whole weeks to celebrate it, 50 days, then the third great time of the church year is Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples to give us wisdom and power to live as Jesus' followers. And then those weeks that follow Pentecost, we might think of those as the great, green, growing, faith-growing Sundays moving all the way around the circle. Now, I'll leave this circle of the church year here. I'll have it at the chancel step, and don't worry, choir. I'll move it out of the way for when we sing. But I'll leave it here at the chancel step for you to look at on your way to the altar rail today. A few minutes ago, I mentioned the themes of Advent the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Many of those same th themes in Advent are found in these latter weeks of the season of Pentecost, season after Pentecost. What we here at All Saints have sometimes called, have come to call the Sundays before Advent, which for us will start next week. The themes of preparation, of being awake, of judgment, of seeing clearly the state of the world and of the human heart, these are all present in the readings on these November Sundays as well as in Advent. Now the theological term for these themes is eschatology. Eschatology, that's your vocabulary word for the day. And it really just means the study of last things, which are all in service of pointing us to the Christian hope. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell are certainly fearsome and not to be taken lightly, but they themselves are not the hope that faith in Christ is based on, no matter what some of the angry internet and television preachers may want to tell you. Eschatology tells the truth about the world, but it is only a partial truth. Those who are wise in the ways of God will know this. Eschatology helps us to remember that our world does indeed need saving, although we only have to look at the news online or in the newspaper to know that. So eschatology helps us to remember that the world needs saving, that we Human beings left to our own devices will fail more often than not through our own fear and frailty and sinfulness. And if we don't understand this, we run the risk of deluding ourselves. We become like the foolish young women, the bridesmaids in Jesus' parable, who go out with torches to welcome the bridegroom to the wedding feast, along with their friends who are wise. But the wait for the bridegroom to arrive is long, and they all fall asleep. And it is only the foolish, and it is the foolish ones who are not ready, who have not brought enough oil with them to keep their torches alight. They have not understood that the wait might be long and the night dark. 
Now, to be honest, this parable is one of Jesus' most difficult to understand. He didn't tell it in a public setting, but just to the disciples privately, to those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem and were even now spending the last day of his earthly life with him. Remember, we're still in that period where Jesus has you know, come to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, has been teaching in the temple, and we st we're still a day or so away in Matthew's gospel from the Last Supper. So we're in that very fraught, dark time. It was the last days of Jesus' earthly life, but the disciples didn't realize that. So in thinking about this parable, which is so difficult, this morning it will be enough for us to know that Jesus understands that there, that there are those who will be foolish and that there are those who will be wise in the ways of God. And Jesus invites us to wisdom. Jesus invites us to be prepared to recognize him, to welcome him, even in the midst of darkness and difficulty and despair. For that is the Christian hope that Christ has come into the world, as the Collect says, to destroy the works of the devil and to make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. And that Christ will come again at the end of the age to bring to fulfillment God's vision of wholeness, peace, and joy, new life, and new creation. And in the meantime, we are wise to remember and contemplate not only the four last things, but even more, the depth and the truth of Christian hope. So hear that hope in the words of the pastor, teacher, and Bible translator, Eugene Peterson. Here's what he says. God loves you. God is on your side. He is coming after you. He is relentless. Amen. Let us stand and give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people are form five, found on page 389. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding bishop, for Carly, our own bishop, for Vicki, our rector, for Sister Monica Clare, and the community of St. John Baptist, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord for those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, especially the 12 Baskets Food Ministry, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, especially Carol C., Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Barbara O'Day, Molly Ferber, Joanne, John, Travis Cosempel, Kathy Levon, Mac, Deanna R., Molly Perdek, Heather Wallace, Phyllis Wallace, for the people of Ukraine, for the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem and the Middle East, and for a just and secure peace in the Holy Land, and for those we name. That they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have committed themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, that they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for all the ministries of our parish, especially our Wednesday Bible study group, and for these members of our congregation, Maria and Gary Stepperfen, Mark, Dan, and Amelia, Tom and Diane Straka, Martha and Greg Story, Francis, Jackie and Michael Sullivan, Holly, Jill, and Sarah, John Painter, Nancy Tennant, for Bob Jackson and Susan Levon preparing for marriage, and for all God's blessings we now name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Lois McFarland, for whom the altar flowers are given, and for those we name. And those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another to all our, and all our life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now returning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to our service this morning. Good to see you all. Please do come across the street at the end of the service and join us for, uh, for coffee hour. Uh, there'll be some refreshments, even if you don't like coffee. Uh, there'll be other things to enjoy, but most of all, so we can enjoy one another's company and conversation. Uh, there are announcements on the back page here. Uh, today is our stewardship in-gathering. If you have your uh, pledge card with you today, uh, please put it in the offering plate. We are going to bless them at the time of the offertory. If you haven't done that yet, you can make a pledge online. Uh, go to our website, there are directions here, or uh, you know, pop it in the mail, whatever you can do. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everyone who came out for the fall planting day yesterday. We had a, a, good, a good chunk of work that got done. That was really helpful. Um, Looking ahead, Thanksgiving Day, there will be a service here at 10 o'clock, communion and hymns. That's always enough time, we hope, for you to get your turkey in the oven and uh, whatever else you might need to do, get on the road, but take some time to stop and give thanks to God that morning. If you look on page seven of your service leaflet, you'll see a bigger announcement. That is the announcement about the concert that's coming up on uh, December 2nd at 4 p.m., this concert is uh, going to be music for Advent and Christmas. There will be ad, uh, audience participation. So maybe we'll sing a, a carol or two. Maybe it's one of your favorites, let's hope so. Um, so it's the choir and some friends and the bell choir. It's gonna be wonderful. In addition to starting the Advent season that way, this is a fundraiser for the restoration of our altar window. window. Some of you will remember that we started that five years ago, uh, fundraising for this window. And of course we had to take a big pause during COVID. So we're starting up again and um, it needs to be, uh, there's a lot of restoration work that needs to be done as well as some of the side windows. But this is the, this is the one that is the, um, uh, that really needs our attention. So we're, uh, we're fundraising for that. Uh, so please come. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor. It's going to be a great way to start Advent and Christmas. If you are new or visiting with us today, please do know that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion at the Lord's table. Come forward and uh, we can either stand at the altar rail or kneel. Put your hand out like this. You'll be given bread in your hand. You may then consume that directly and drink from the chalice or save your wafer and dip it in the wine. Either way is fine. And um, if you prefer not to receive today, please come forward and cross your arms across your chest and you'll be given a blessing. But please do come. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
gracious and loving God, giver of all that is good and true and beautiful and life-giving. These cards represent our work, they represent our lives, they represent our dreams. The pledges which we make on them are but tokens of the abundant gifts that have been given to us, and they are pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received, for all we have been inspired to be, for all we are challenged to become in this Christian community and in your world. May they be the first fruits of all we have and not what we have left over, reflecting the way you give to us. May we see them as our offering to you, sacred, holy, yet earthy, filled with possibilities. May we hold this image in our hearts and minds so as we watch our offerings each week come to your table, we can see our very selves being part of this offering. It is us on the table, living sacrifices to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now continuing on page 361. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our, of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come and receive the gifts of life, hope, and freedom.
Continuing on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and stirs heart and soul, be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.